And we take a moment just to reflect. So what is this time of isolation bringing us in terms of our ability to slow down? To turn in or tune in. So we're, we're moving maybe a lot of that extra outwardly attention as we bring ourselves inward, not only into our homes, but also into ourselves. And hopefully this time of reflection is also <clears throat> bringing a newfound sense of understanding about the things that we no longer really need or the things that we're shedding, the things that maybe are no longer serving us or that are in excess in our lives. And that could be anything from the way that we do our shopping to um, our daily routines at home. So shedding what no longer is serving us. And that's an amazing thing to be able to realize, which we often don't have time to realize through this gift of isolation, through this gift of slowing down. And once we shed, that's when we can start to really discover what is essential and what is it that truly matters. And um, hopefully we began to realize that we don't need very much to feel good to survive, <laughs> to have our basic needs covered. But hopefully we also realize what truly matters in terms of, of connection. Yeah, we're moving in, we're drawing in, and as everything settles and as we start to shed, what comes up? And oftentimes it's actually realizing that beautiful need for connection again but connection from a place of truth so from connection from a place that is really dear to our heart so connecting with those that we love whether it's family or friends but also connecting with the things that we love hopefully so maybe we've had time to tune into can be a hobby or even being in the kitchen and just actually devoting time to things that we usually are um, strict of time for. So just keeping your eyes closed, still tuning into your breath. The last thing that I will ask you to reflect on is how is your yoga, not necessarily the asana itself, but really yoga and everything that it stands for, everything that you come to practice at the studio for, how is your yoga serving you now in these sort of strange times? How are the lessons or the gifts of yoga in terms of keeping a positive outlook on life, in terms of learning to trust ourselves. In terms of knowing the tools that we have available to us to stay grounded. And also in terms of how yoga helps us to detach yeah detach when things are not going the way that we expect or whatever is usually the norm when that when something shifts and changes that we're able to release our attachment to those things taking a step back taking a breath in and being able to observe and allowing all those things to move through us well, hopefully with less suffering And I think that when we 
have the ability to do that, then again, it's the positivity and the ability to see the good of the situation that can then stay with you and accompany you throughout this experience, whether you're on your own or whether you're lucky enough to have maybe someone sharing or holding space with you at home right now. Right, and then to that, we will bring the hands together to the heart center just to open our practice and we'll take three rounds of OM together. So to get a deep breath in, we'll go straight into it, spine tall, open those lungs. to the heart we give thanks for this time to come together and practice and then we'll slowly <clears throat> release the hands down and open the eyes so <clears throat> i've uh, centered the practice today around um since obviously all of this virus situation has a lot to do with the chest and the lungs so i've, I've centered the practice around the lung meridian which corresponds also with the large intestine meridian so the energy pathways of the lung meridian run from your thumb along the front of the arms and the hands and lead into the chest yeah and the large intestine meridian runs across the back of the hands so it runs from the index finger the back of the index finger and then also glides up and over the back of the arm and hand into the center of the chest that's in the classical Chinese um, meridian pathways. And then there's some that correspond also to the legs with these two through Zen Shiatsu. So we're going to be doing a little bit of heart opening to get um, some strength and resilience back into the lungs and, the lungs and the chest. And there'll also be a little bit of opening through the hips and the legs to accompany that. <clears throat> So I'll ask you to come onto your mats <clears throat> and we're going to start with what we call open wing, which is basically when we're lying on our bellies and we take the arm out to the side, palm of the hand pressing into the ground, and we're going to start to roll over in that same direction to open the chest. Now, before I show you what that looks like lying down and we get into the pose, what I'd like you to remember is that as we come across, the shoulder tends to kink up. So we want to keep the shoulder blade grounded and the front of the chest clear so that we feel that nice opening moving from the fingers all the way up into the front of the chest. <clears throat> well, maybe you have already your blanket as a nice extra bit of cushioning on your mat. <clears throat> And we'll come to lie onto our bellies. Stretching the legs back and you can broaden the distance between your legs a little bit more. And we'll take the right arm out to the side to begin with, more or less in line with the shoulder, palm of the hand, spread wide open, pressing into the ground. Side of the head will come to the ground or side of the head will come onto a cushion or a block if you need that. Ground your right shoulder blade down your back and then very gently start to roll. As you start to roll by pressing into your left hand, just take your left foot behind you. you can, you're welcome to bend the knee here and bring it for support into the ground. Or simply keep it extended. So just find 
that comfortable spot where you can start to feel a sense of opening through the right fingertips, through the front of the right arm, through into the chest, across that lung meridian. And then directly we're going to plunge into our most powerful tool, which is the breath. We're going to plunge, feeling into our breath. And stabilizing that breath. So trying to find a sense of balance between your inhale and your exhale. And remember, upper body is definitely more sensitive and more fragile than the lower body. So maybe not going too far into the edge of sensation with this in terms of intensity. So it's really slowly being aware of how the arm extends, the front of the chest opens. Be very gentle as you ease into this opening. And with yin, we always remember our relationship to the ground, our relationship to the earth. So we allow the body to sink and to release and surrender into the pool of gravity. I'm going to take four more big breaths here. And then you're going to slowly release this by gently bringing yourself back onto your belly. And then you can bring both of your hands together to make a little pillow. And we'll just take a pause. So rest your forehead onto your hands and pause. Just assimilate that. The belly softens. The legs release. And then we'll take that to the other side. So we'll take the left arm out, palm of the hand open, in line with the shoulder. And then we'll slowly start to rest the side of the head to the floor and bring that leg behind us for support. Remember, you can keep that leg long and reaching. You can arch the leg back or simply bend through your knee and then gently find some support on the ground. Feel the grounding of that left shoulder blade down your back so that you're clearing the front of the chest. And then super mindful, super slow breaths here. Tuning into sensation across the front of the arm and hand. more breaths. We're guiding the breath right into the heart center. And then very gently bring yourself back. Bring yourself back to lie onto your belly. And again, making a little pillow with your hands, resting your forehead to the back of the hands. And then 
observing. It's observing the sensations that you're left with across the chest and shoulders. Slowly we'll come back up and we'll make our way onto all fours. So just take a moment to stack your <clears throat> knees underneath your hips and your hands underneath your shoulders. And we'll take three, four rounds of cat and cow just to start to let the spine become a little more supple. So really nice and slow on the inhale really extend through the front of your body as your chin lifts and the chest opens really curl the tailbone up and back sitting bones up and back and exhale very slow and very gentle round bringing chin to chest releasing the crown of the head towards the floor and again inhale breath breathe in open through the front and exhale round soften and release finding lots of space through the back of the lungs here as we round inhale breath opening through cow pose and exhale breath rounding through cat pose And then come back to a neutral spine and from our neutral spine we'll walk the hands forward for anahatasana so the hips are going to stay in line with the knees and we're going to extend the arms forward remember if there's a lot of pressure in your shoulders when you extend the chest and the arms forward then broaden the distance between your arms and your hands otherwise you can keep them more or less the same line of the shoulders so the arms extend forward. We have lots of space through the front body as the forehead sinks down towards the mat. And pay special attention here to the softening of the chest, the softening of the front of the heart towards the ground, towards the earth. And we're going to keep the lungs um, kind of as the star of the practice right now in the sense that we want all of our focus and our attention and the nurturing action of the breath to go towards the lungs, towards each breath that comes in and out of the lungs so that they feel supported, they feel <clears throat> vibrant, they feel active. There's a progressive softening of your belly. <clears throat> so just tune in also with your solar plexus, your lower abdomen. And one more big breath here. And we're going to come forward and bring ourselves onto our bellies again. And when we bring ourselves onto our bellies, we're going to set up Sphinx Pose. So remember that nice alignment of your shoulder to elbow relationship for Sphinx, yeah? The forearms are going to be pressing down into the mat. They help support a tiny lift of the heart and chest forward. You can keep the <clears throat> forearms in that same line of your shoulders and arms, or you can bring the palms of your hands together to the center if that feels better. <clears throat> um, 
I recommend that you broaden a little bit the distance also between your legs. So we're really giving the sacrum and the sacroiliac joint room as well as the hips room so that all of the weight of the pelvis can really release to the ground. And then just closing the eyes and tuning in, really tuning in to this shedding. And we're shedding the holding, yeah, the resistance. So how can we find a sense of still being present and somewhat maybe active through the upper body? But at the same time, completely relax and surrender, not only through our mindset, but through our bones, through our muscles. Slowly scan up from the feet, relaxing the toes, relaxing the ankles, relaxing the calf muscles, the thighs. Feeling the weight of the pelvis release, feeling the lower belly relax. And probably appreciating that gentle compression through your lower back, maybe some of you higher up towards the mid back, but definitely across the curve of the lumbar. Taking a pause here to breathe into that compression zone where the kidneys are. Relaxing through the kidneys as well as the solar plexus. And then again, coming back into the lungs, just observing the breath of the lungs. Can we clear some extra space here across the rib cage through our breath? We're going to take this up into a seal. So we're going to broaden the distance between the hands more towards the outer edges of the mat. And we're going to lift the elbows off the mat. As the elbows lift, the arm bones stay straight, but the chest can hammock through <clears throat> that gate of the arm. So the spine hammocks through, and the belly softens forward, and the heart pulls forward, but the arms stay nice and long. See if you can give yourself five more breaths here. And then very slowly exhale, release. And again, find a nice little pillow for your hands, for your head, and make a nice pillow with your hands for your head. 
And as your chest comes down, we're going to pull the left knee up in order to release a little bit through the lower back. We're gonna pull the left knee up towards the left armpit or towards the left knee. We're gonna to continue to let the breath settle in the lower back. And then let's change it over and bring that to the other side. So straighten that left leg back and flip the gaze over in the opposite direction. Draw that right knee up towards the right elbow or the right armpit to wherever it feels comfortable in height. And then breathe down into your lumbar. slowly you're going to come back so you're going to straighten that right leg back and push yourself back into a little child's pose so just broaden the knees a little wider apart towards the edges of your mat sink your hips sink your pelvis back walk your arms forward and again rest the forehead to the mat really releasing down into the lower back. Alternatively, you're welcome to bring the palms of your hands together and rest your forehead to where your thumbs meet. Deep, slow, even breath. Slowly rising back up <clears throat> and coming to shift our position, taking your time <clears throat> to sit onto your sitting bones. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'm going to do a forward fold and um, you have a couple of options here, okay? so. Option one will be to take this forward fold, much like we do Janu Sirsasana. Yeah, Janu Sirsasana is that position where we bring, let's say in this in this case, we can start with the right knee coming into the chest. Yeah, and then the right knee will drop out to the side. The sole of the foot is to the inner left thigh. And if you have any knee issues, I usually recommend that you prop that knee up on either a cushion or a block. <clears throat> Alternatively, really what we're going for, if this is available to you, so if what I'm going to show you next is not available, then stick with this option, <clears throat> is to cross the leg over in that same figure four so that the foot is coming over the left thigh. What happens here is if you don't kind of get it into a comfortable nook of your muscle here, of your left thigh uh, quad, then it's going to kind of feel a little bit uncomfortable. So a couple ways to get around that can be one to just add a little bit of a layer of your blanket or your or a little cushion if you have a thin cushion you could layer that blanket on top so you have a little bit of extra cushioning so that when you cross your foot over it's not digging so intensely into your quad muscle <clears throat> we're going to be taking a forward fold over that leg 
Alternatively, if you have a block, you're also welcome to bring the block to the outside of that leg and then you're resting the outer edge of that foot onto the block so that you will usually lift some of that pressure off your left um, quad muscle. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the journey forward, we're gonna take it super slow so that it gives us time to really settle into the pose. Your left leg is extended, but let it be relaxed completely. So if the toes roll to the side, don't worry about it, let it be. Unless the leg is really rolling out to the side a lot and you want to control that, then you're welcome to add another prop like the bolster in order to keep that from happening. Important thing is that we're finding both of our sitting bones on the mat and that from here we take a nice deep inhale breath just to open the front of the chest and the front of the body. With lots of care, with lots of attention to what's happening in the hips, in the knee, we start to venture forward. And as we venture forward, we know that in yin, we work with a nice, gentle, soft roundness through the spine. There's no need to keep our spine straight. As we relax through the muscles of the legs, the hips, Slowly start to work your way forward. So maybe you're just walking the hands forward very slowly. And then the big muscles, harder for them to shed, harder for them to let go. Yeah, they they hold more tension, especially the muscles around the hips and the pelvis. Yeah, they're doing so much work when we move the legs. Um, that connection that feeds back into um, the torso. So notice, can I really relax through my thighs, through my outer hips? Can I relax through the bowl of my pelvis as I come forward? And as that starts to settle and drop so as more space starts to appear in the hips and in the legs then the spine continues its descent and is cascading forward really until you are completely releasing the weight of the head forward as well so if the neck and the shoulders are feeling tense and tight Feel free to find a little bit of gentle movement from side to side through your head until you find that softness coming in. And then what is our ability to sit with what arises. So again, how can our yoga serve us here? By allowing us to take the seat of the observer. And take three more big breaths. Inhale very slowly, take your time to come all the way back up, nice and easy. And we're gonna release that leg. If you wanna give that knee a little bit of movement, feel free to stretch the leg up and down or release it, circle it. And then we'll extend that right leg forward. <laughs> And we'll come to find the same thing on the other side. So 
Remember, please do not force your knee. Please do not force your hip. Be respectful and take any of the options, any of the variations. They're gonna serve you in a similar way, yeah? We're gonna still be lengthening across the back of the, um, the lower back. We're still gonna be opening a little bit through the outer edges of the hip and also through the, through the hamstrings, yeah? So either Janu Sirsasana, remember, sole of the foot to the inner thigh, where needed support for <clears throat> the knee with the block, or going a little bit further to that variation for the day, which will be to create that figure four and to stack the outer edge of the foot maybe onto the block or bring that blanket in underneath the shin to support the quad muscle. <clears throat> Relax the front leg, take a nice deep breath in, really lift, Create space for the lungs again. Create space for your waistline. Find presence as you root down through sitting bones. And then we're going to start our journey forward. And really remembering that the practice of yin is all about our ability to listen. So as I move forward with care, what is the feedback of the body? Is the body inviting me to go further or do I need to be tweaking or adjusting my position, my alignment in a way that serves me, that, observe, that, that um, serves the health and the well-being of our bodies? And really let every pose be a journey. So take a deep breath in and start to soften. Start to really soften as you come forward. Soften through the spine, the legs, the shoulders, the neck. breath as a, a vehicle to connect with the whole so every part of your body every aspect of your field of energy Take a moment to check in with your jaw here, your eyes. Relax all of the facial features. Again, giving ourselves three more big breaths. Slowly inhaling, rising back up, moving out of this nice and slowly. <clears throat> and again, you can bring the knee in a little bit. You can create a bit of movement in that leg if it's feeling tense or tight. <clears throat> and then slowly 
removing the block. <clears throat> we're going to kind of take a similar position, but we're going to do it supine now. So we're going to do it on our back. So kind of like that runner stretch where we create a figure four, but we draw the thighs and the knees into the chest. Um, so come to lie on your back. <clears throat> I'm going to give you some options here as well. So let's start by crossing the right leg. <clears throat> as you come out to your back, you're going to cross the right foot over the left thigh. And you can prop the outer edge of the foot directly onto the center of that um, quad muscle again, or you can take it a little bit further across. Just check out what feels most comfortable and most suitable. And then I'm going to give you a couple of options here as well. And you can always progress into this as well. Yeah. So first of all, feeling a sensation of length and space out of both of your sitting bones. So out of the tail end of your spine so that your pelvis feels nice and level and square. Hip bones, press at the hip bones, nice and level and square. We're going to bring the knees in towards the chest and we're going to thread the needle as we call it by bringing the right arm through the loop of the legs and the left hand behind the left thigh. Now we don't need a lot of pressure here. As we relax your shoulders and your arms and your hands back and down, you're going to feel enough pressure that draws that shin in towards your chest and that draws your left knee in as well towards your chest. And start to begin to soften through the glutes, through the lower back. And the way that we can progress in this pose, so some of us are going to feel really tight here, and this will be more than enough to just start that process of release, of surrender, of softening. But some of us will be able to extend the left leg and either grab behind the calf muscle or if you were to have a strap or a band at hand, this is so just so you know, in case you want to <clears throat> do this or take this into your own practice, you could loop the strap across the top of the foot or the band across the top of the foot. And then again, using the weight of the arms, we're just letting the shoulders sink back, the arms sink back as the legs draw in. And we'll just hold this a little longer, letting, again, inner body soften, inner body relax. Smooth breath. Let's take another five big breaths here. And slowly begin to release very very gently bringing that left foot down and again releasing the right leg if you want to stretch it or again bring the knee in or take the knee out to the side or create a little circle please feel free to do so otherwise just dropping the foot to the floor and finding a little moment of stillness through center. And 
and we'll take that to the other side. So let's bend the left knee, flexing the left foot, and again, finding the outer edge of the foot either directly to the center of the right thigh or a little bit further across. Just notice what feels best for you. And then again, feeling or even looking back, are my hips nice and square? Am I able to lengthen evenly out of both sides of my sitting bones so that I can bring the legs in towards the chest nice and slowly? but without crushing or compressing up along one side of the body, yeah? And then thread your needle, bring your left hand through the legs, your right hand behind your right thigh, and then drop so you're clearing the space around your neck by letting the shoulders sink back. Remember, this is not an active stretch. So what we're trying to do is make that mind to body connection or mind to muscle connection by asking the muscles to soften, to let go of their grip around the hips, glutes. We can store quite a lot of tension in the hips so you're very welcome to tweak the breath here so we're usually inhaling and exhaling through the nose but you're welcome to guide a deep breath in through the nose into the body and take a slow and deep exhalation out through your mouth as a way to clear any excess tension And then remembering that you are able to progress or go deeper into the pose by extending that top leg, maybe using a strap or simply grabbing the back of the calf muscle very gently, or hanging out, just letting the shoulders sink back. And that breath still moves all the way down to your pelvic bowl. Take five more breaths here. Okay, and then we can slowly release. let that foot come down and again take it nice and slowly if you feel like you need to extend the leg and give it a nice rub give it a nice rub bring the knee in or kick it out to the side I invite you since you're in your homes just be guided by your own body's intuition sometimes we want just to be still when we come out of the poses and sometimes something might need a little bit of attention, so we might just be gentle with the movements that we can create in the joint side itself. And just let that, again, be assimilated by your body. And then we can roll it to one side. 
and we'll come back up. Mm. And before we come into a twist, we'll come back to our cat and cow position. So we're gonna come back onto all fours. And we'll take three rounds of cat and cow again. So inhaling, and then exhaling round and curl through your spine, draw your ribs in towards your chest. And again, inhaling, breathe in. And exhaling round and curl, chin to chest. And one more time, inhale, breath. Extend the front body and exhale, breath round. Then come back and for a moment, just simply sit onto your shins. And we're going to glide the hands back, bring the hands behind us for support, and we're trying to lift the knees, going for a really gentle front of the ankle stretch. We're trying to lift the knees as we shift the weight back onto our fingertips or onto the palms of our hands. Big breath in here, and big breath out. And then release, if that gets a little bit too much, release, come forward. And then as you come forward, tuck all 10 toes underneath. Sit back onto your heels. And then taking a nice deep breath in, reaching your arms up. So we're gonna interlace the hands at the top, pressing the palms of the hands up towards the sky. Lengthening across those <clears throat> lung meridians again and really feeding breath into the chest. Front of the rib cage, back of the rib cage, sides of the rib cage. One more big breath. And those hands are going to release and the fingertips are going to come to the floor behind us. They can point outwards or they can point inwards. Just see what suits you best. Broaden the knees a little bit if you need extra space and then just try to lift the hips up. Try and lift the front of the chest. Big, big breath again, clearing the front body. And then exhale, bringing the hips back down, walking the hands forward, <laughs> and releasing those toes. <laughs> Good, we're gonna come onto our backs again, and we're gonna take a nice twist, and I'll give you some options for your twist. So. So we are going to aim for a twist where both legs are straight, yeah? So the idea is, <clears throat> let's say we start with the left leg extended forward and the right knee will draw it into the chest to begin with. <clears throat> This leg will straighten, and this leg is the one that's going to come across the body until the right hip stacks over the left hip. So now, if this is too much for the hamstring, remember we have variations of this. So we could also bend through the knee, rest the foot onto the left thigh, and then gently bring that across the body over to the left. If you need support, take the support again of either a cushion or the block so that when you bring your whole leg or your knee across, perhaps you can find a starting point where the thigh or the knee is able to rest onto something that lets the hips and the lower back ease off. 
The important thing is that you really find a nice leveling through your pelvis. So we're in neutral through the pelvis, right hip over left. And that the arms are gonna spread out wide, yeah? So that we're again, working through that lung meridian in the upper body from the thumbs all the way into the chest. And if possible, glide your gaze over and across the right arm shoulder towards those right fingertips. So option one or option two with the leg straight. Maybe you can use a strap here again, or you can use your band, or maybe you already reach your big toe. <laughs> and one more thing to notice here is, as the hips stack, is my right hip, because of the tension in the hamstrings, because of the tension in the glutes, is my right hip sort of riding up and compressing the right side of my waistline. If it is, then do your best here. You can also bring your thumb to the groove of the, the groin line, yeah, or the groove of the hip line, and help yourself by rolling that right outer hip down slightly so that it feels like there's more space across the right side of your waistline, more evenness, and that will help you really release and open into the IT band here and into those right um, glute muscles. And then letting go. Inviting the breath in to do its work. Letting every exhale assist the grounding of the right shoulder blade, the upper back. Taking one last big breath here. And see if we can come back through center nice and easy. And when we come up through center, we're going to just, again, hug that right knee into this right side of the rib cage. And just breathe into your lower back. And then we can release this foot to the ground. <clears throat> So we're going to extend the right leg forward and this time bring the left knee in. <clears throat> left knee comes in to the chest. Extend the left leg up. 
and we'll go across either with the leg straight or with the knee bent and find the support for your knee onto a block or other support. Take the arms out wide to the side, open into a nice T-shape through your upper body. Square your hips off, left hip over right. Find that extra room and space across and out of the left side of your waistline. And then let your body release to gravity again. One more big breath. And then slowly bringing it back in. And as you bring it back in, just gently flex the right foot, lengthen out through your right heel, and very softly hug the left thigh and knee into your chest. One more time, taking an inhale through your nose. And a nice clearing exhale through your mouth. Good. And then we will roll to the side and set up our final pose. <laughs> you can see that time flies. <laughs> Time flies in this virtual world. <laughs> so we'll do a heart opener to finish. So a nice one just to lie on the back and we'll use that also as our kind of as our Shavasana relaxation pose. So um, you know that in class we have different setups for this. Today if you have either cushions, a pillow, or a bolster itself, you could go with the bolster through the center of the mat. Remember that when we are using the bolster, we don't want it to be wedged up into our lower back. We want to keep a little bit of space, like a palm's distance between the lower back and the bolster itself, so that when we recline back, there's space, yeah? So this could be one option, just lying back through the center of the bolster. If you need extra support, maybe adding another blanket through the back of the head and neck. Otherwise, letting the arms and the hands spread out wide and the legs lengthen forward. And then the other variation of this could be, this is just again, just as a reference for your own self-practice at home, would be to take the bolster across the width of the mat and to bring the block behind you, the bolster for um, support for the head. So in this variation, 
we'll do is we will <coughs> drape the shoulders so that they're not stuck on the bolster, but they're actually rolling over the bolster, nicely clearing the front of the chest. The diaphragm sternum is sort of the highest point here of that curve. And then you can decide how much height you want here for the block. You want a little bit more arch, a little bit more heart opening, maybe dropping the height of that block down. And then again, extending the arms and the hands. And full release of the body here. Again, starting by contemplating the feet, relaxing in the toes, the soles of the feet. The ankles. Relaxing the calf muscles, the back of the knees. Relaxing the thighs. Letting go of the hips. Softening the cross and the pelvic bowl, all the contents of the pelvic bowl, so bladder, reproductive organs, digestive system. Acknowledging the breath at your belly. And the lungs clearing the heart space. In your jaw, your eyes. Experiencing the breath as a gentle pulsation through your body. more and more deep breath here. And slowly start to bring your <clears throat> right foot in, your left foot in. Breath holding opposite elbows into the elbows and upper arms above the head and just linger here for three more breaths and 
arms come down as you come off your bolster just shift your hips over to the left roll onto your right side body remove the bolster remove the block and then come to lie in a fetal position for a few breaths spine tall just take a moment to observe how you feel after practice and you reflect once again on the space it's created through practice, both internally and externally. The shedding, the letting go. That gives space to what's really essential. So just as we discussed at the beginning of practice, what is essential? What is revealing is essential for you through this process of isolation, of confinement? Taking a moment again to remember our loved ones. And that sense of connection or that yearning for connection that naturally arises from our place of truth, from our heart. We seal our practice with one round of OM. We bring the palms of the hands together to the heart center. Taking a deep breath in. Namaste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thanks again, guys, for joining for some chill time, downtime. I hope you enjoyed that. Ciao.